by Flirtography. Thank you so much. Of course, uh, you take your time. Man. Appreciate it. Uh, so, can you uh, tell me how was your experience with uh, just going through Jesus Christ? Right? What was your experience with that? For you? Oh, yeah, it was. It, it's been amazing. I mean, it, it's. Um, it, you know, we we sort of work in a vacuum all the time, um, and you know, we feel like anime is recorded alone usually. So. Being able to be in a show that you not only enjoy, but like, you know, the audience seems to really react to in a positive way, it, it's been a thrill. And um, Jujutsu Kaisen, the first season, we recorded right when COVID started. So it was a really interesting experience. We had to record it in a time where the entire industry had to evolve into like this at home kind of thing, right? And so we were figuring all that technology stuff out as we were going. And um, for, for, for the tribulations we went through, I think it turned out pretty well. But, and, and, but because of those tribulations, it, it, Jujutsu Kaisen Season 1 was a singular experience that I will never forget. Uh, I had to learn to be my own engineer for part of it. So yeah, it's been, it's been a wild ride, but I don't regret a thing. It's been a, it's been a great experience. So I also saw that you did Amida Maru in the Shaman King. Yeah. Did you have to watch the original to prepare for that role? How did you prepare for the remake as opposed to all the other roles that you have had? Um, I was fortunate in that I did get to watch uh, the original uh, series when I was younger, and I was a big fan of it. So when I heard that um, uh, I would be stepping in to fill in the shoes of Minamaru, it was it was great. Um, I, I was familiar with the character. I knew his backstory. I worked with the new director um, and the casting person to come up with, you know, it's not, not like a replica of the old voice or anything, but um, my own take on it. And um, I, I'm, I'm really excited to see where the series goes. I know they announced recently that there was going to be a new one with, like, the kids grown up and stuff. So, yeah, I'm really uh, looking forward to seeing where Amita Maru ends up in that story. But he's, you know, he's such a good boy. <laughs> he's, he's very honorable. He's half my lines are Lord Yo. You know, so, yeah, it's been a fun job for sure. How you doing? JB is How's it going? First, um, <laughs> first of all, Gojo's the GOAT. Let's <laughs> start there. Um, how long have you been a fan of the JJK before you got started with it? Are you a current reader? And what do you think about season two coming up? Okay, so when I auditioned for Jujutsu Kaisen, um, my wife gets mad at me for telling this story all the time, but like, I actually didn't know anything about Jujutsu Kaisen. And when I auditioned for Gojo, I didn't know who he was. And it was like my fourth audition that day. I had done like a big fighting game right before, so I was like exhausted, right? I was this close to skipping the audition. Like this close. I was oh, just, man. yeah, yeah, yeah. I was literally like, my hand was on the X. I'm like, okay, fine, I'll do one more. And then after we recorded the first episode, I looked into it. I was like, oh people really enjoy this show right um and now i am like a huge fan i am concurrent with the story i'm like deep in there's, there's no extracting me like i'm i'm all in it and um for season two i'm so excited for it but i'm worried because like anime only folks they've been seeing like these really happy previews right right like these super like slice of life like beach trip like happy-go-lucky vibes right and i'm yes. like <laughs> What? Yeah, therapy, what therapy are they session. doing? Therapy session needed all around. Right, exactly. I feel like we're being gaslit, just like Junpei, like the Junpei thing in the first season. Oh my god. Yeah. Um, it's gonna be great. I I just think they're setting us up with very interesting expectations. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. Without getting into spoiler territory. <laughs> all right, thank you. Thank you. Acting in such a competitive field, what helps you stay motivated? Um, I love it. I fell in love with it. Uh, when I was a little kid, I took a theater class in high school and, and like, you know, like a few weeks into it, I was like, this is what I want to do. This is so much fun. I feel like acting is a skill that you can increase over the course of your life, but you'll never reach mastery, you know? And I think that's so great. Uh, it's like this thing that you chase, but you never, uh, never acquire. And, and it's always something new to learn every day. And I, I just think that's so interesting. And to be able to see other actors and to see their skill set 
sets and to sort of like be inspired or borrow or just like trade stuff back and forth, oh, it's endlessly interesting to me. So whenever I get a chance to act, I, I put my all in it and, you know, you do it for long enough and you do it well enough for long enough, you know, pe people will start calling you back for stuff. Yeah, it's, it's, um, I wouldn't do anything else. It's my favorite thing to do in the world. Thank you. Hi, uh, Mark from Blairdography. Hi, Mark. Hi. Uh, you worked on probably one of the most glorious, most violent IPs I have ever been a fan of, and I just want to know, what was it like working on Battle Royale, and were oh, you familiar yeah. with the novel before you got into uh, voice acting of the yeah, 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 dude. Yes, I was. I, I had read the manga. Um, I was a fan of the movie before I got to dub it. Um, Battle Royale is a classic, right? It is it is the granddaddy of like those types of films. And uh, to be able to be a character like Shogo Kawada, who is so cool, like <laughs> he's just such a badass. I don't know if I can cuss. I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, yeah, no, he's 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 so cool. Um, I was honored. I was shocked that they were even dubbing it right? Like, in my head, I was like, well, it's perfect the way it is. It doesn't need an English sub, right? It's Battle Royale, you know, uh, but, but being able to step into its shoes after, uh, into this character's shoes after being so familiar with the story, um, sometimes you need, like, if you're not familiar with the IP, right, you need the help of the director, you need the help of the casting person, you need the help of, like, the client to tell you all about the story. For Battle Royale, you just walk in and you're like, no, no, no. We know what this is, right? Yeah, it was great. It was a breath of fresh air. I didn't have to ask too many questions. Um, the director was like, oh, you seem to be very aware of this character. I'm like, I know. <laughs> yeah, it's Shoko Kawada. What do you mean? You know, like, yeah, yeah, that was, oh, that was a terrific experience. I'm, I love Battle Royale, and I will be endlessly honored that I was a part of it in some small way. Thank you so much. Hi. So, um, big fan of Tekken, big fan of... Yakuza like a dragon. Oh, thanks, bro. Um, can you walk us through? Is there like a different process that you use to prepare for anime versus video games? Yeah, yeah. So um, in anime, there's a lot more. So in, in America, lip flaps are king in our industry, okay? So when the characters do this, uh, we have to hit each and every single one of those or try our very best to, right? And that takes a lot of technique and skill, and you have to sort of still fit all that good acting in between these windows, right? So it's the single hardest form of... In my experience, I've done, I think, every form of uh, voiceover there is at this point. Dubbing anime is still consistently the hardest. Um, and you wouldn't know with how much we get paid for it. But um, the difference between uh, that and video games is we don't have to worry too much about lip flaps in video games, right? Unless it's like a JRPG and there's just movies we have to dub over. Um, video games generally will shred your throat way more, you know, if you're, you're part of those Call of Duty games or whatever, you're throwing grenade, you know, blah, 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 all that stuff. You know, you're screaming for like four hours at a time. With anime... Those big battle scenes only happen like you know every every few episodes. You know you, you get you get some nice dialogue, you get some nice you know uh, story stuff, and then maybe you scream for like you know like 20 minutes, right? Where in video games it's it's full on like four hour session, four hour session, four hour session. You in break? Okay, take 10 minutes, four hours. It's it's brutal, dude. Like. I would, I love video games, and I would do them forever, but, like, it, it, you really need to be careful on them. You can, I feel like every actor only has so many video games in them before they start sounding like this, you know what I mean? So, yeah, main difference is just strain on your voice, I think. Thank you so much. My name is Jalen Collins. It's really nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, man. Um, my question is, so, again, with, like, the lip flaps and stuff. Yeah. When you're about to record for an anime or, like, for another season... How long do y'all start before, like, the season is actually released? Or, like, mm. when y'all start in production? And then on top of that, how many, like, takes does it – how many times does it take to actually, like, get the line down, like, yeah. perfectly synced? with everything yeah sure um so generally it depends if a show has already been out for a while in japan uh if it's been out for a while then we have way more time to work on it uh, unless it's like you know uh, a simul dub in which case we're generally about a week behind um the japanese version uh for 
the amount of takes it requires to do anime, it depends on who you are, basically, you know? If you've been doing this for like a decade, um, your brain has evolved in a way where it's like, okay, I'm just gonna psychically be able to place these in these flaps because I've seen them so many times, I've, I've experienced them so many times. But when I first started doing anime, those lip flaps, oh man, they are killer, right? Because you're just trying to get the line out. You're just trying to be a good actor. And suddenly you're like three words in and the line is finished. You're like, whoa, 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 what do you mean? What do you mean? How am I supposed to talk that fast? And the, and the director will just be like, you just got to do it, right? And not only do you have to get it within that time, you have to match each syllable and consonant to each one of these. So I would say to get good at anime, it takes like, to get really good at it, it takes like, you know, almost 10 years. Like you really have to sort of make your brain grow in a way that it just, when you see the flaps, your brain it can offload that information to muscle memory that's really the trick it's like it's like fighting games right you, you start out your garbage you know you can't do one fireball you can't right but you know you play for long enough suddenly you're doing combos you're throwing fireballs you're throwing shoryukens and you're in your in your sleep you know it, it's it's muscle memory that helps a lot with the lip flaps thank you so much thank you so much jb again How's it going? Um, who would you say are the top three characters that you've done that you felt the most attached to? Most attached to? Huh? And why? Um, the first one would probably be uh, a, a character named Giant, or in, in um, America we named him Big G from Doraemon. Doraemon is this really cute kid show. It's about a little robot cat. Uh, it has a little pocket, and he's from the future. It helps like a little kid. Um, and the reason why he's my favorite was when I was a little kid, the first thing I ever remember reading was a Doraemon manga. Ever, 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 ever. So to be in the show like years later, it, oh, it was such a treat. It was super nostalgic. Um, second to, I don't know, man, Gojo's pretty good. <laughs> You know, he's pretty fun. I like him a lot. And uh, for third, oh man, there's a Fire Emblem character that I've always, like, I fell in love with voicing named Owain. I am Owain Dark. Now, villains, face my wrath. Um, he, he's such a good kid. He's, he reminds me of, like, my theater kid self. So, yeah, yeah, probably um, uh, Big G, Gojo, and uh, Owain from Fire Emblem. Thank you so much. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, how you doing? Hi, nice to meet you. So you've done a lot of anime. Yes, sir. But what is your big three? My big three anime? Oh, my personal big three? Oh, man. Okay. 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 It's going to get spicy. Um, just my ass. All right. <clears throat> Number one. <laughs> Number one is going to be a show called Slayers, all right? Uh, back in the day, it was like this kind of fantasy adventure comedy. Uh, Slayers, Slayers Next, Slayers Try. I really love Slayers Next. To me, it was just it's such a perfect show. It, it, took its, it didn't take itself that seriously, but seriously enough for you to really enjoy the story. I thought the voice acting was excellent for the time, you know? And um, after Slayers, I'm a big foodie. I love food wars. Yeah. I love Food Wars so much. <laughs> it's such a good show. I know I know there's a lot of fan service and all that stuff, but if you can get past it, like the the animation on the food is so stellar. You know, it's 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 incredible. And um and uh, the third one <laughs> So this is the this is the spicy one. I love a show called Keijo. Uh, <laughs> um I think it's the greatest shonen show in the history of anime, okay? Um, I'm not gonna go too far in depth with it uh, because of the uh, subject matter, but um, yeah, it's, it's a sports show, sort of, right? But the amount of hype and the amounts and the the animation and the just just um oh god what is the word i'm looking for the energy and passion of the characters that go into it you forget about the fan service aspect right away and you're just watching these people compete in something they love and they then the way they animate it and the and the references and the and the love letters to other anime like they had they had a, a fate stay night reference in it you know the 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 gate of babylon it's in it you know what i mean it's it's so for anime fans and anyone who just love battle shonen, Keijo is number one. Forget Jujutsu Kaisen, all right? Keijo! <laughs> don't let my bosses hear that, don't let. <laughs> but, you know, forget Jujutsu Kaisen. Keijo. Keijo is where it's at. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much.